we'll start with the gentleman in the second row. Interfax Ukraine, uh, Igor Solovy. Скажите, пожалуйста, как НАТО будет себя вести в случае, если Российская Федерация все-таки использует повод миротворчества, как она называет, для введения войск на территорию Украины? At this stage, uh, this is still a hypothetical uh, question. As I mentioned, we are very much concerned that Russia keeps this option open. But I do hope that Russia steps back um, because it wouldn't be in Russia's interest to intervene further. Further intervention from the Russian side would lead to further isolation further international isolation uh, of uh, Russia. I have no doubt that if Russia were to intervene further, it would lead to deeper, more profound, tougher economic sanctions that would really hurt the Russian uh, economy. Lady in the front row. Валерия Кондратова, Лига Бизнес Информ. Вы сегодня объявили о прекращении сотрудничества НАТО с Россией. Интересно, какие-то детали, то есть по каким направлениям прекращается сотрудничество? Может, какие-то проекты будут свернуты? Мы suspended our practical cooperation with Russia uh, in all uh, areas. Um, and that has affected uh, practical cooperation projects uh, when it comes to um, Afghanistan, counter-terrorism, counter-narcotics, counter-piracy. I strongly regret that because I think basically we have uh, a common interest uh, in addressing these security uh, challenges. But obviously, after Russia's illegal military actions in Ukraine, we can't continue uh, business as usual. And this is the reason why we have suspended practical cooperation uh, with Russia. Uh, and um, uh, they will be kept suspended uh, as long as uh, Russia doesn't comply uh, with the fundamental principles uh, of uh, the founding documents of NATO-Russia cooperation. Gentlemen over there. Дозвольте, будь ласка, Марія Васильєва, студія 1 плюс 1. У мене питання з приводу того, чи є все ж таки якийсь план допомоги від НАТО Україні в тому разі, якщо Росія, як це визнали і в самому НАТО, з дня на день може просто вторгнутися на територію України. Чи може це бути військова допомога передусім? Дякую. Again, such further Russian um, intervention in Ukraine is still a hypothetical uh, question and we never answer hypothetical um, uh, questions. Um, as I mentioned, um, I have no doubt that the international community would react uh, decisively uh, through broader and deeper and more tough uh, economic sanctions if Russia were to intervene uh, further. As regards NATO, we have already discussed with Ukraine how we can step up uh, our military-to-military -military, uh, cooperation, um, more intensified uh, Ukrainian um, participation in NATO exercises, training, uh, education, and also long-term assistance to modernize um, the Ukrainian armed forces and the Ukrainian uh, security uh, sector. But these activities uh, will proceed irrespective uh, of uh, the situation uh, in eastern uh, Ukraine. They are part 
uh, of the distinctive uh, NATO-Ukraine uh, uh, partnership that we hope to see further developed uh, in the coming years. Gentlemen over there. The policy rock from Ukrainian daily day, the day. Uh, uh, Mr. Secretary General, you mentioned two days ago in uh, being in London that uh, the World Summit would be turn po uh, turning point for NATO and the NATO would be ready after Putin. It would help to boost the uh, readiness of NATO to be ready to cope with the old and new threats. But don't you think it may be too late to be ready? Because it seems that NATO is not, not now ready to cope with this Russian threat, Russian aggressions. Don't you think uh, that Putin's thinking is, reminds the Stalin thinking? He usually asks the Pope, how many divisions you have? So how many divisions has NATO to stop Putin? <laughs> I can assure you that NATO does have all the capabilities needed to ensure effective uh, protection of all uh, our allies. But I have stressed that the illegal Russian behavior has created a completely new security situation in Europe, and we will have to adapt to that. Let me remind you that since the end of the Cold War, for more than 20 years, we have spent a lot of efforts to develop a constructive relationship, a constructive partnership with Russia. We have even decided at the NATO-Russia summit in 2010 that we will develop what we call a true strategic partnership with Russia. But as we all see, Russia doesn't consider NATO as a partner. On the contrary, when you read Russian military document, documents and when you listen to political leaders in the Kremlin, you realize that they consider NATO an adversary. We strongly regret that, but we will have to adapt to that. That's what I have stressed. And this is the reason why at the summit, um, I would expect us to adopt a series of measures under the headline of a readiness action plan uh, with the aim to improve our ability uh, to act swiftly, if needed, to ensure effective protection of all uh, our allies. So just to stress once again, we do have all the capabilities needed to uh, ensure effective uh, protection of our allies, but of course, uh, the illegal Russian behavior makes it necessary to adapt, and that's what we're doing. Ladies of the um, Natalia Mahulatia, Ruslavi 2. Mm. Uh, first, uh, looking ahead to our summit um, in Wales, we will have a NATO-Ukraine Commission uh, meeting. At that meeting, I hope uh, we can adopt a joint uh, declaration that will outline areas where we will uh, enhance cooperation between NATO and Ukraine in the coming years. And that will include assistance uh, to um, build up capacity and modernize um, uh, the Ukrainian uh, armed forces and, and the, the security sector. And as I mentioned, in the short term, I could envisage a uh, more intensified Ukrainian participation in NATO exercises, uh, training, um, uh, ed education. Um, so, um, as regards delivery of uh, equipment, that is not a, a NATO uh, issue. And the reason is that within our alliance, it is not NATO that possesses military equipment. Um, it is individual nations. So a possible delivery of equipment is a national decision taken by uh, individual allies and not by NATO as an alliance. Gentlemen over there.
Сирку, Запорожье, Газил Томих. Я участник Евромайдана, на данный момент волонтер. Только что вернулся с зоны АТО, готов утверждать, что украинцы сильны в своем стремлении к победе независимости и будут бороться за нее до конца. Насколько сильно желание стран участников блока НАТО помочь Украине в этом, ну, хотелось бы уточнить по некоторым странам. Франция, Австрия, Швейцария. Yeah, let me remind you that Austria and Switzerland are not members uh, of uh, NATO, um, but it, it points to an important conclusion, namely NATO is not uh, the only response uh, to this uh, crisis. Na the NATO response should be seen um, in connection with the response from other international actors such as the European Union, the US, G7, and so far I I think we have seen a quite strong unity uh, among these uh, actors uh, in the response to the uh, illegal, the Russian illegal military um, uh, actions. Of course, there's no reason to hide uh, that there are uh, different views, uh, but despite that, we have succeeded in maintaining a strong international unity in the response uh, to uh, the Russian, the illegal Russian behavior. Um, and uh, all decisions uh, within NATO are taken by unanimity, by consensus, so per definition uh, we move uh, together. And so far we have taken determined steps uh, based on unity uh, within our alliance, and I'm sure uh, that will also be the case uh, in the future, including at the summit in Wales. Yeah. Well, the Ukrainian week. You just said that NATO stopped all cooperation uh, with Russia, but um, in continuation to the previous question concerning the selling of mistrals, because France is uh, the NATO member state, so what is the position now after the stop of cooperation on the selling of those ships? Thank you. Um, this is a national, it's a French national uh, decision. Again, um, as NATO is not um, in possession of uh, military equipment and as it is not NATO uh, that invests uh, in uh, uh, equipment, uh, it remains a national decision. Um, having said that, I'm also um, confident uh, that uh, the, the French government uh, will take uh, responsible uh, decisions that also take uh, the overall uh, security environment uh, into account. One last question, uh, gentlemen, yeah. at the back. Frank Tischens, RTL News, Dutch Television. Uh, I have a question. Do you see any role for NATO in securing the crash site of MH17? Um, no, uh, and uh, we haven't uh, received uh, any request uh, in that respect. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much to the Ukraine Media Center, uh, Crisis Center, for hosting us. Thank you.